Welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael DeLon, and today I am talking with Danielle Levy. And Danielle, well, first of all, Danielle, thanks for um, squeezing me into your, your busy schedule. I appreciate you uh, being here. Thank you so much for having me. You are this welcome. Is gonna be fun. Oh, it, it is going to be a blast. So Danielle, um, uh, Danielle is what, what I call the business growth co-pilot. And so, um, you know, my audience understands, Danielle, that uh, one of my favorite phrases is everybody needs a Caleb. Okay, Caleb's my eldest son, who, who's my chief operating officer, and he really runs the back end, the operations of our company because he's really detailed. He's the integrator. His his uh, purpose in, in business life is to make my dreams come true. <laughs> so, and, and so <laughs> when I when I found Danielle and learned, learned about what she does, she's a Caleb. Right. And but but you don't do it for one company, you do it for multiple companies. You help business owners understand why they need a, as I would say, a co-pilot helping them fly their plane, really, so we can get, get to greater heights and do do uh, more great things in the world. So um, that's what I want to talk about today. So Daniel, thanks for being here. Um, tell us as we start, how in the world did you get to where you are today? Yeah. Um, so I think I have, of course, I think I have a full cool story, but um I um, am from the Boston, um, USA area and came up um, in a very, very fast paced. I, I hit like the coolest places to work. Um, I wasn't doing it um, on purpose. It was just sort of kind of where I landed out of college. And then I was on this amazing trajectory um, working with the it clients, working with the it, you know, big players in Boston, like really, really had an incredible career which led me straight into burnout after probably, um, I don't know, maybe 15 years or school years or so. And I ended up in graduate school thinking graduate school is going to be the answer that I'm going to figure out what I want to do if I get an MBA. Um, and let me tell you, it didn't help at all. Yeah. So I got out of graduate school, even more burnt out and it was a milestone birthday for me. Um, and I said, you know what? I just want to play and I just want to have fun. Uh -huh. And every opportunity that I tried to go after failed for one reason or another. So, um, for example, like, um, I was going to go to Cuba with a friend of mine. Um, and at that point you needed, um, particular travel rights to go there and, and she got laid off from her job. So that didn't work out or I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely dating myself if you know, Joan London. Um, but she, she ran a summer camp in Maine and I was like, I'm going to Joan London summer camp. You know, I just want big fun. And there was a, like a virtual sign on her website that said after 10 or eight years we're closed. Um, and so it was like, I was just like fighting the universe where how was I going to celebrate this really big birthday? And, um, it definitely was rabbit holing at the wee hours of the night. And I came across this retreat that I was just so excited about and mostly out of spite. I was like, I'm just going and I'm going by myself and I'm totally <laughs> an introvert, um, completely against my character, but I was so mad that like the universe didn't want me to celebrate my birthday and have this fun that I deserved, um, that I ended up taking this getaway trip. And what I didn't understand was I was going for it to celebrate my birthday, but a number of the biggest influencers in the online space were there. And had I known who they were, there's no way that I would have gone on that trip. Right. But we were in um, Asheville, North Carolina. It rained for six days, five, six days straight. And I got to know these influencers in a really, really deep way. Um, didn't know what a virtual assistant was, didn't know what an OBM was, didn't certainly didn't know what an integrator was. Um, I was just trying to have fun for my birthday and get to know these great women. Um, and I came back and found out that a couple of them were under contract, um, working with the A-list influencers. And I had several job offers waiting for me. And so for me, it was such a life lesson. And, um, you know, work is going to show up when you least expect it. Yeah. And also thanks to that, in my mind, risk or sort of place outside of my comfort zone that I pushed myself to go celebrate this birthday. Um, I had such a pivot happened in my career. And not only did I get like a handful of clients, like I look back now at the influencers that I was working for, and I don't know what they were thinking hiring me, um, but really just A-list clients right out of the gate. So that's awesome. very that's long awesome. story, but that's that how is, I got but it's, it's intriguing. And um, a, a lot of perseverance there, a lot of fun, a lot of beating on doors, but also when you got, when you got there to North Carolina and it rained, you know, it'd be really easy to go, you know, and just, but it sounds like you made the best of it. 
and you made some connections. And what I find in business life is it's the connections that take us to that next level because we just never know who knows somebody or who has an opportunity that they're not sharing or whatever. But for you to spend that kind of time with those A-list people, you built relationships. Exactly. And, and that's really where business is built. Exactly. And we try to tell our clients all the time, it's, it's the relationship, get to know people. They, they're gonna buy you more than what you do. And that sounds like well, exactly what happened with you, Danielle. So um, that's fascinating. I love that story. Let, yeah. let's, let's talk about what you do now then. I, you know, I, I call you the business growth co-pilot. Why is that? What do, you, what do you do? How do you help business owners and entrepreneurs today? Yeah, so I um, I came up always being in a marketing communications design marketing heavy agency. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been exposed to a lot of different industries, always with a marketing lens, but I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not a copywriter. I'm not the creative. Um, and so I'm a trained project manager, but I specialize in um, the creative space. And so what that has allowed me to do is quickly go into businesses and understand the operations back end of what is happening. Um, and then also look at the front of the business, um, and really look at, you know, the offers and the, the, how they're positioning themselves from a sales perspective and marketing perspective, and really take a holistic look at everything that's going on in the business um, and put together strategies for growth. So the analogy that I often use is if you think about your favorite hotel or restaurant, right? There's three parts to it. There's the beautiful lobby that you walk into with the flower arrangement and the mints and the concierge that's waiting for you. That's your front of the house of your business, how people are seeing you. Um, there's the house, um, which is the thing that makes you money, which is your core offer um, and all of the items in your, your product offering. So um, in the case of that hotel, it's, it's the room, it's the meals, it's the, you know, whatever that thing is that they're selling. Right. And then there's the back of the house that's, that's actually making the business work. So it's accounting, legal team, HR, like all of that business of the business kind of stuff. And I systematically work my way through 360 degrees of the business, looking at each of those areas to figure out what is going on here, um, whether it needs a scaling strategy, whether something is broken, whether it's a communication issue, whether whatever the issue is, like I, I just sort of um, have the lens of being able to go through um, companies and diagnose their health. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's um, similar. It, uh, one of my mentors is Roy Williams, the wizard of ads, and he wrote, he's written many books, but in one of his books, he talked about the three worlds of business, yeah, which okay. is exactly what you just said. He says, it's the outside world, how people perceive you. It's the inside world, how you serve customers from start to finish. And yeah. then it's the world of the executive office. <laughs> and yeah, and he just put it that way to go, Wow, that is so important. So what, what you're talking about is is really big, uh, especially the, you, you said a word that is, um, at, right now it's like the bane of my existence. Uh -oh. And that word is scale. Because everybody online is, I can help you scale to be an eight-figure business. I'm figure scale, scale, scale. Join my program, I'll help you scale. And I know for a fact that it's not gonna work for most business owners because they don't have systems built on that back end. And even though if they try to scale, if they're going to fail because they they don't have somebody like you who's who's systematizing it so that they can scale because they think it's just doing more advertising. If I just get more clients, well, no, sometimes that'll kill you because you don't have the systems in place. If you don't have the operational processes in place to get me into the hotel, to check me in fast, to get me to my room, to get my food, all of that, you're not going to scale. So that's what I, I, I love about what you're, you do is you take this holistic approach and go, okay, you might have a great offer, but if you can't fulfill that offer, you're going to have unhappy clients and they're going to tell lots of people. And so am I in the ballpark? You are. And I think something to touch on is um, there's a difference between the government thinking that we're working for ourselves <laughs> um, and actually working for yourself. Because I think a lot of times um, entrepreneurs or any business owner, really, they, they find a business because it's the thing they're passionate about. It's the thing that they're good at. It makes them a bunch of money, hopefully. Um, but as long as they're tied to that business, yeah. um, you know, it's like, you're not taking the vacations that you want to take. You're not spending the time with the family because the business is always calling you back in. 
Yeah. Um, and so what I like to talk to my clients about is like, I know you're working for yourself, but are you really working for yourself? That's right. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And that's one of the things, you know, you talk about uh, one of the books I read early, early on was um, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Okay. And you talk about something that he that he just pounds is working in your business versus working on your business. And too many entrepreneurs work in their business too much. Um, and you, you had a quote on your website that says, stop working in your business so that you can grow faster. Talk about that because most business owners don't understand that. Yeah, sure. So I am a workaholic um, to, to a point of, I love to work. People ask like, what's your hobby? What do you do? What do you, I'm like, I work. I love yeah. to work. It lights me up. The, the problem with that is, you know, like I can work seven days a week, 14 hours a day or, or whatever it is. And I can create endless piles of busy work for myself. And eventually I get to the point where I'm like, I'm tired. When am I going to get a day off? Right. And then all of a sudden I don't love to work that much because right. I'm just tired and burnt out. The other problem with that is, is all I've done is a bunch of busy work that hasn't actually moved anything forward. Right. right? So it's, for me, it's about really thinking. I mean, we've all heard the the analogy with the jar when you put the rock in first instead yep. of the sand, right? It's that same thing. It's really thinking about the rocks that need to be addressed. It's about the bigger picture things that only I have the secret sauce for. It's only the things that I am passionate about. All of the details of how is this going to get published and returning that email and making sure the content goes here and all of that stuff that takes so much time can be figured out how to get done. And so if you don't get out in front of the business and actually start leading the business, the yeah. business is just going to crush you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I find one of the best ways to do that is to get away from the business. So my son and I, uh, Caleb, we spent last Friday all day doing quarterly planning for the mm -hmm. business. And I went out on my back deck and had my laptop. He's in California, by the way. I'm in Little Rock. And we did a Zoom thing, but I was in a totally, I was not in my office. Just a change of scenery helps me think differently. And I think business owners need to understand it's, it's, it's good to get away from the office, to go take a walk, go, go rent a hotel room, go do something to get away, to think and, and to elevate yourself out of those weeds to go, what am I really trying to make happen this, year, this week, this year, next year, five years from now? Get that vision and like you said, lead the business. Otherwise, it's going to drag you down. That, that was really good. Um, yeah. If, if I could just add on to that. So sure, sure. my husband will attest to this. If there is a trendy thing to do, yeah. I will run the other way. Amen. I left corporate because there were a lot of big words that people were using and I didn't see enough action behind yeah. it. Right. Like I, I kind of cut across the curve in a lot of ways in, in my life. I don't entirely know where that comes from, but what I will say is I've heard people say so many times what you just said about stepping outside or taking a break or, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not true. Oh. I could scream that from the rooftops of all of the things that I try to go against. As soon as I gave into that idea yeah. of it's not working harder, it's about creating the space. It's about, you know, changing scenery. Like my whole world changed. And I just really, I am that person that, that is like probably sounding really annoying right now talking about it. But it's so true. It is. And I it wish is. I had really, really embraced that much, much sooner. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that because it's uh, I'm, I'm taking walks right now because I'm Little Rock and we're in the fall and it's just gorgeous all, all day, every day right now. And so in between calls, I'm out for a 10 minute walk around my block or a 20 minute walk. And sometimes I don't do anything. I just walk. Sometimes I'm on call, but it's just getting away, getting my mind clear so that when I come back, I am actually more productive. I get more things done because I do that. So, yes, Let, let's talk a little bit about you. You mentioned also the hidden key to business success and why you're not already doing it. What un, unpack this hidden key to business success that you talk about? Yeah, I am. Um, and this this probably goes against you know, this goes with me saying that I go against yeah. most things that are out there and talked about. Um, I don't think there's really any rules about as business owners, as entrepreneurs, well, you have to be doing this or you have to be doing that. You know, the one that I like, you, you've probably seen it work like a four day week and you've earned a vacation and, you know, 
all of these like marketing myths that are that are out there. Um, you know, that's great for some people. I have um, middle aged kids right now. Right. right. Working seven days a week works for me in a really healthy way. Uh -huh. Working evenings when I have the space, when I can go out and get them at the bus stop works for me in a really healthy way. So I do think it's about boundaries, but I also think it's about sort of looking at all of the stories that are out there and being really true to who you are and what your values are, understanding what the balance is, and then either working your schedule that way or, you know, um, even in terms of how I staff my team, there are things that I am just not good at. I don't care if it's the things that the CEO is supposed to take care of. Yeah. I am not good at them. I rely on my team. I hire people because I trust them. And I'm going to work in the areas of my business that I'm the best at, not the ones that I should be working on. And so, hear the applause, people. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just think it's about people kind of getting kind of quiet with themselves on a regular basis and saying, what is the best use of my time? How do I push myself a little bit? Yeah. What is the season of life that I'm in? You know, your son is in California right now. That's a very different experience. Like I work every Friday night and I proudly say that I work every Friday night and I work every Friday night because my kids are on the ice and they play ice hockey and they love it and it lights them up and I can be there with them. Yeah. And that is a gift that, that I don't take for granted. And that works for me. That's right. No, that's awesome. And, and the more you get to know me and my audience knows this, Daniel, I'm only good at four things in life, four things. Okay. Outside of that, I am mediocre at best. And so I've done the same thing. I've built a team around me, right? My son, Caleb and I, we are, we are opposites in almost every way. And that's good. We're like a hand and a glove. Right. We fit together and our business continues to grow because he has helped me focus and stay in my area of, of excellence. So I only do what I'm great at. He does everything else that he's great at. And it's, it's just marvelous trying to get business owners to take that step to hire teammates and to understand how to hire teammates, right? And, and things. So I, I'm, I love what you just said, because it's so important for business growth. If you really want to scale your business, listen to what Daniel just said, go back and and rewind it and listen to that again and build a team around you that are great at what you are not at. And who, who cares what people say should be the, what a CEO should do this. Who cares? Do. Yeah. And, you know, I'll give you an example from this week. Um, I have a client right now who invested a lot of money into it's like a co co coaching program that she and I go through together. And the, the intent of the program um is there's, there's probably 30 pairs or something that go through this program is to teach um, visionaries and their counterparts how to work together well. And the two of us had like a three hour planning session one day last week. And we came out with a plan that we both were so lit up about. We we're just so excited and this is going to work. And it felt so authentic to the company. And we took it back to the um, CEO of this program and she ripped it to shreds. And this is not your role. And this is not your role. And I actually understood what she was saying, but she wasn't applying it to the season of the business mm -hmm. and the steps that needed to happen to get everybody into the lanes that they needed to be in. And so again, it, it was just an example for me of like, don't, you, you can't Google everything. I mean, you can Google everything, but you really just have to listen to your intuition um, and be really self-aware about um, and have confidence in what you think is going to work best in, in most situations. Absolutely. And, and be willing. I, I love what you said. Be willing to swim upstream. I, I tell people that I swim upstream all the time. That's just what I do. Uh, but that's okay. Um, let's talk about, and maybe this plays into to your, your kids. Um, ice hockey, you, you say every business needs an ice plan. What, yes. what in the world is that? ICE stands for in case of emergency. Um, and so the concern that I always have with businesses is, is especially I work with a lot of businesses that are going from six figures to seven figures, seven figures to eight figures, is that they've built a business around people rather than function. Yes. And so um, I have been in a situation during a seven figure launch where the website has gone down, the owner was on maternity leave, and no one knew how to get the the keys to, you know, the back end to get everything back going up again. Right. 
or like, oh, this password is shared like on some piece of paper and I gave it to so-and-so and so-and-so is not with the team anymore. Or, yeah. you know, oh, I forget the login with that. It's like when you're filing your taxes or so whatever it is, you don't want to be looking for that magic password, right? right. Um, and so it's about having that safe place that again, you're going through piece by piece in your business and saying, if this person runs away on their dream vacation or God forbid something happens to somebody, um, does this business stand alone? outside of the people that are in those functions. Yep. Um, Michael Gerber, again, build a, build a business based on systems so that you can hold your business in your hand and it runs without you. Why does McDonald's, why can McDonald's hire pimply-faced teenagers to run a multi-million dollar company? Why, how does that happen? It happens because of systems. Yeah. And we harp systems. We, we give marketing systems to our clients that we use and we give them step by step here's how you do this and we we help them implement because we know for a business to grow your marketing has to be systematized caleb my son told us in a coaching call the other day i said caleb how many how many systems have you built in the last two years he looked at his little spreadsheet thing right he's like well we've got 64 systems running right now and he's building new systems all the time. And he's got people to run those systems. And he's met. And I'm like, that's amazing. But that's what he does. That's what you do. People like you think that way. Entrepreneurs don't. And building systems doesn't have to be complex. We tell people, start with a checklist. Do Loom videos. Do whatever you have to do so that when that next person comes in, they can just say, oh, here's my training manual. It's five videos. And now I know how to do it. There you go. It's a system. But you build one system at a time. And then we call them stackables. It's like pancakes. You build them one on top of the other. And it's not, I built a system this morning before this call. I built another system in our business that's going to be very, very profitable for us because once I built, I built it once. Guess how many times it's going to work? <laughs> dozens and dozens, right? I'm, so I have a, a couple of comments on what you've just said. Yeah. So first is I have to admit, I have not ever worked in a fast food restaurant, right. but I am, I am, I don't want to say that I'm seriously thinking about it, but maybe it's like in my retirement plans or something, but I am so fascinated because McDonald's comes up as a case study in so many conversations that I've had. And specifically the example that came up on a team that I was on this week was just thinking about French fries. When McDonald's started, they had no process for cutting French fries. Now, when you, and this is the hearsay part that I want to experience, but apparently when you go to make French fries, they're already in the pre-cut bag with the preset amount of oil. And then the buttons on the fry maker just know like based on this size, like here's what you push. So it's so easy to make those French fries that they're going to taste the same basically wherever you go. And, you know, that was a process for McDonald's to figure out how do we start with potatoes and end up with this whole piece at the end. Yeah. But what I would go, so that's the one thing that I would say is that people shouldn't get intimidated that they have to immediately know how to make the French fries. No. It's a process. Somebody had to create it. <laughs> the other thing that I would say is I love that you created a system before we got on this, this conversation, but it doesn't have to, it's, it's not like a huge thing. I think people are like, I have to make time to document oh. the thing. No, just get whatever piece out of your head in whatever format is easier, yep. if it's a voice memo, if it's a loom, if it's text, if it's, and then give it to somebody where they can put it in a really safe place and build on it, yep. or next time they do it, they can elaborate. It's like, it's a constant evolution that yep. should be an organic part of what you're already doing in your day-to-day -day, rather than this, oh my gosh, I don't even have a Friday afternoon or a weekend that, that right. I can like, tackle the systems. It just, it doesn't work that way. That's right. No, it, it, and it's so true. And the other thing that we teach people, and we're coming to the end. I, I, I wish we had oh. like another 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm chatty, I'm sorry. No, no, this is, you're hitting my hot buttons. Is I teach, I teach our clients to do, and I learned this from one of my coaches, focus time. And it's on my calendar every, once a week, every week. I've got a two hour block, but I say even an hour, every week called focus time. And it's not movable. You can't get on there. You can't get on my calendar. And that's my time to build systems or do something like that. And so what I do is I, I open up that focus time appointment and I'll type in there a, a, a system I might want to build or something I need to think about. And then I save it and I close it so mm -hmm. that when focus time happens, I don't have to go, well, what am I supposed to be doing? No, I open up the appointment and, and they're listed. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Now let me think about what. 
it just helps so much to have a, a time during the week that I know I'm going to be working on my business. Yeah. Right. And that's what happened this morning. That was my focus time for the week. Now I'm I'm done. I'm on to doing things like this. So it but it's it's taking ideas and concepts from other people, people like you who think radically different than me, praise God. Um, but to say, what can I learn from you? How can I implement one thing? Do I have an ice plan? My son and I, okay, ice plan. He asked me a few months ago, um, he's like, daddy, what happens if you get hit by the bus? Do we have money? Do you have an insurance policy that's going to, that's going to provide money to the company so we can go out and hire somebody to replace you? Like a key man policy. I'm like, I don't know. Let me, let me. So we went out and bought a key man policy. And then about three weeks later, I said, Caleb, what happens if you get hit by the bus? Because he does so much. I, so I had to take like an $8 million policy out on him. No, I'm just kidding. But we're looking at, at taking him policy out on him because if he gets hit by the bus, I need money to come and hire Danielle and say, Danielle, help me and, mm -hmm. and find somebody who can replace Caleb because he, he does the work of like three people. Mm -hmm. That's an ice. That's one one example of an ice plan that we're implementing in our business. It's just yeah. one. Do you have that, business owners? What happens when you get hit by the bus? Because believe me, it will happen to you. How are you How are you preparing for that? Or and I tell people, okay, I'm on my soapbox. Most business owners don't have a business. They have a high paying job because a business will run without you. Yeah. And that's what Danielle helps people do. She can help you look at your business. 360 degrees, look at the three worlds of business and see where you can improve, how she can help you. Um, I, I, I dare say there's not a business out there that you can't help in some form or fashion, right? And so don't don't get all high and mighty. Don't get arrogant. Say, oh, I got this all figured out. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Reach out to Danielle. And, and, and ha, all right, so Danielle, how, how do people find you? What Where's the best place? If they've heard this and, and they've, they've got some peaked interest, where do they go? Yeah, so my website is daniellecleavey.com. Um, there are plenty of examples of ice plans right there on the on the site. People should go check that out. Um, and I always love to connect with people. Instagram is probably the best social platform for me. Danielle underscore C underscore Leapy. Awesome, awesome. All right, that's been that. That's good. We're gonna have some of that in the show notes as well. And just I just appreciate what you do because you bring a a perspective to business and business growth as that, what, what, what I call the co-pilot. You're not there trying to run the business. You're saying, let me, you, you go do what you want to do, Mr. Pilot. Let me make the plane run and fly better, more efficiently. Let's fly higher, faster, stronger. And then when it comes time to make course correction or something, I'm going to defer to you because it's your business, but I'm going to make sure that the flaps are set right and, and we're, we're going to get where we want to go better, faster, stronger. Anyway, that's how I see you. I, I hope that's accurate. It is. It's great. Thank you. You are welcome. Danielle, thanks for being my guest today. Uh, check her out at uh, Danielle C. Levy. That's L-E-V-Y dot com. Danielle C. Levy dot com. And uh, from there, you can you can find out more about her and how she can help you grow your business as your business growth co-pilot. Danielle, thanks again. Have a great Thank you day. for having me. You also.